Welcome everyone, Gaussian here, back with another video. Today we are going to continue our Amazon's guide. As always, I am going to show you a very simple and safe build, which you can easily adjust to your own preferences. Let's begin. We are going to start on a fresh spot and go directly for a big house, exactly as in the first example from our basic guide. As we have already seen it, let's speed it up. I just placed a big house which will be ready in few minutes. Before that happens, we have to prepare as many buildings as we can. As I've already decided where my third wood complex will be, let's place a forester for later. While waiting for big house to finish, besides our wood and stone production, we also have to find a place for beekeepers fishermen and a farm, so there's plenty of work to be done. Right now our pioneers are capturing trees for woodcutters and preparing a place for a third wood complex. As soon as it's done, I'm moving them to the forest on the left, where I'm planning to place a honey production. I will also take two of them to capture a space for a stone cutter in the north. Let's place our first stone cutter. and our third wood complex. As you can already see, even though it's relatively early in the game, as Amazons we have to plan far forward. Let's send one pioneer to capture a space for fishermen. Soon we should be able to place our honey production. We are going to build two beekeepers and a forester to provide the trees for them. Let's not forget about changing work area of nearby woodcutters, so they don't touch the trees of beekeepers. This is a very common mistake made by most of Amazon players at least once. I will also switch the area of woodcutters in the north, as they don't have trees nearby anymore.
Let's finish up our honey production. And now can move our pioneers to capture space for fishermen and hopefully for farm nearby. Like for all other races, after few games you will get a feeling what will fit where. Our big house is almost ready. I've already unposed the stone cutter and now a forester. Now when our big house is ready, we are going to make more pioneers and geologists. How many exactly and which one you should do first? It really depends on the spot and situation. Here on a safe spot without any nearby, we are going to start with pioneers to capture more land as we really need it. After that we are going to make more geologists. Personally, I like to make 15 of them. As for pioneers, make as many as you need. Just keep in mind that you will have to turn most of them back into settlers while starting to build heavy industry and mines. Let's unpause the rest of the wood complex. We finally have a place for fishermen huts, so let's prepare them. Let's add our 7th woodcutter, which will be a freelancer that will prepare a place for heavy industry. We can prepare a second big house for later as our shovelers are currently idle. It's time for our third and final stone cutter. Our honey production is getting ready. Let's place a farm and make a quick summary. 
When I was creating Amazon's basic guide, I wasn't really sure where it should end. Getting a big house is for sure important, but I believe this moment, where we do have a steady production of wood and stone, along with honey, fish and grain, is true end to a preparation phase. So far we've placed 7 woodcutters, 3 sawmills, 3 foresters, plus 1 additional for beekeepers, 3 stonecutters, a big house, 2 beekeepers, 2 fishermen and a farm. Our plan for next minutes is quite simple. We have to build heavy industry along with mines, get two large temples so we can have level 2 for our soldiers as every big temple gives us some mana and build another big house as we are slowly running out of settlers. I'm going to show you a standard build order with iron smelter. Right now I will only mention that it's possible to skip iron smelter and go directly for laboratories. We will talk about this later. We've found few decent mines, so let's place them. Let's now prepare our heavy industry. I've placed a market on a red dot. It's not ideal, but I want to have it close to the terrain that I'm not going to build on. Later on we'll be sending gold there, which in multiplayer games will be taken by my allies with pioneers, so they can have more fighting power for their soldiers. A place where gold is being stored is usually called a gold spot. Ideal one should be away from your buildings so players can take gold easily but also far away from enemies, as they will for sure try to steal it. Usually a good candidate is a desert or hilly terrain like in this example. One last tip about gold spot is that even though sea coast feels like a good place for storing gold, it's actually terrible, as it's very hard to defend it from ship attacks. If possible, try to avoid storing gold on coasts. Let's place a sulfur mine for later. My iron mine is blocking me from placing a second good sulfur mine, but I don't care, as I can always crash my iron mine later when I will run out of meat. Let's prepare our big temples. We are lucky enough to find both sulfur and gems, which is one of the most important things for Amazons, as it means that we will be able to use our laboratories for making gold. Important information about pickaxes. On the start of the game with high goods, you have 6 miners and 5 pickaxes. So because we have built only 3 stonecutters, we can still build 8 mines without producing a single additional pickaxe. Let's 
let's prepare our first laboratory, which we will build in the next phase. We can now unpause and build our big temples. After them we will finish this phase with second big house. So let's talk about this particular build order. We are going to build temples before second big house and before starting gold production. The advantage of that approach is that we will have level 2 faster so we can recruit some soldiers and be safe from enemies which is always a priority in my guides. A lot of players are taking a different approach. They delay getting a level 2 and focus on making fast gold, which in my opinion is double-edged sword. If everything will work out for them, they will definitely provide more gold for their team. However, there will be a lot of games in which they will simply die soon after as they won't have soldiers to defend. My advice, especially for new Amazons players, is that you should focus on defending yourself. Games are usually long and you will be able to make a tons of gold, but to do that you have to be alive. Whenever you have some free time, try to have a look at your mountain. You should be always adjusting your specialist and planning future mines. Let's prepare a second weaponsmith which will be supplied from laboratory. And a toolsmith, which I carelessly placed on red dot, but we still have some time before our temples will finish. Once again let's place some good mines for later, because why not. As our temples have almost all necessary materials on site, and missing ones are on their way, we can unpause our second big house. Before going further, let's summarize buildings from the last few minutes. We have built our heavy industry with iron smelter, weaponsmith, barracks, market, to coal and one iron mines. Soon we are going to have level 2 thanks to big temples and we are working on our second big house. In third phase which is going to be a final one, we are going to start gold and food production. Besides that we will also increase our weapons production. Let's prepare waterworks mill and two bakeries. Because we have gems and sulfur, all we need are fishes and bread. We won't need meat at this point. As our big house was placed earlier than gems and sulfur mines, we can safely unpause them and still be sure that big house will finish first. Now when we have level 2, let's turn some pioneers back into settlers and recruit some soldiers. Amazon soldiers have less health points 
so you always have to keep that in mind while trying to estimate if you can defeat your enemy. I'm going to crush one big temple, as I'm not going to build more. For those who don't know that, once you crush a big temple, you won't get any mana in the future from new big temples. Before doing that in your games, always consider if you will be able to place your mana production. On some spots, when you'll be lacking space, a better idea might be to leave them and even add two more later to get second level 2 for spears and some additional mana for spells. Our freelancing woodcutter is preparing a place for weaponsmiths in the future. And once again let's take care of our mountain. A good player is always one step ahead in planning. We can now start building second weaponsmith and toolsmith. As our second big house is ready, let's make some pioneers and plan a third big house. Our first laboratory is ready, so let's talk about it. Laboratory is a special building available only to Amazons, which produces iron and gold bars from sulfur and gems, and it's extremely powerful. So how exactly does it work? From one ore of each sulfur and gems, you will get from 0 to 3 iron bars and from 0 to 3 gold bars. The minimum which you will get is one bar of either iron or gold, the maximum that you can get is 3 iron bars and 3 gold bars, which is just crazy good. Normally for 3 iron bars and 3 gold bars, you would need 6 coal, 3 iron and 3 gold ores. And here you can get the same from 1 ore of sulfur and 1 ore of gems. Of course we have to remember that it's random, so in practice one working laboratory can supply one weaponsmith. But let's not forget to consider that gem mines require only fishes and sulfur only honey. Both of those are really easy to produce. So when Amazons finds both gems or sulfur, they can produce plenty of very cheap iron for themselves and at the same time gold bars for entire team, which makes them very valuable for the team. When we are placing our heavy industry, I've already briefly mentioned that it's possible to go for fast laboratory instead of iron smelter. Now when we understand how laboratories works, let's talk about that. Getting a laboratory instead of iron smelter is for sure beneficial for the team, as you will deliver the gold faster. In practice, it's very hard to get food and good enough mines fast enough to run fully running laboratory for your first weaponsmith. Usually, you will be delayed at least few minutes with weapons production, which sometimes might be deadly for you. So my advice would be to definitely start with iron smelter on spots with enemies, and if you happen to be very safe away from enemies and you find good sulfur and gems mines, you can definitely start with laboratory and just see how it works for you. As we are heading to the end, let's summarize this phase. We are lucky enough to find two sulfur and two gem mines to start gold production with two laboratories. We've built toolsmith and additional weaponsmith. And very soon we are going to produce bread with waterworks, meal and two bakeries. From this point you should be able to run at least two weaponsmith till at the end of the game. Next steps depends on your location. If you have additional sulfur and gem mines, you should definitely build them along with more laboratories and weaponsmiths 
while not forgetting about honey and fish production. In future, you should definitely add some mana production to slowly work your way towards level 3. And if you will run out of sulfur and gem mines, don't be afraid to place a meat production and run more iron smelters. Whatever you will decide, always remember, never stop building. And that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching and as always, see you in the next video.